All right, so on the installation of these shocks, the first step is we're gonna remove this Voss collar. So we're gonna, I take a little set of uh, needle nose pliers. You can see it's got these little flat ends. And this is gonna help to uh, remove this. I spread them apart and then slowly at the same time, raise this brass fitting off. So I bent it a little bit. Now I can carefully Remove it. Just like so. Then this part, this twist, and pull this off. All right, now we're going to take the line, wipe it off with the supplied Voss color uh, set, the set of the little baggie. And then you'll notice there's this piece of plastic it's holding the, uh, the little brass fitting in the correct position. You'll notice there's a flat side, uh, which uh, that's how this is gonna go in. So this right here is gonna go like this. And then the flat side will stay in that same orientation with the curved side on top. So we're gonna take this line and I take a little bit of uh, grease. It's, this is the super lube uh, grease right here. This is okay for uh, the O-rings on the fitting so it doesn't swell them. You don't want to just use any grease, specifically that grease. Um, we're going to slide this on. It allows it just to move more easily, more freely in there. I'll add just a hair of grease. Nothing thick, just enough just to allow it to slide easily. I'll light, wipe off just the tip. And then we'll take our brass collar, make sure there's no dirt on that collar. And we're just gonna simply slip this thing on. Carefully opening it to get it on. Just like so. So we'll get it flush. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the shock for corrosion preventative, I use Corrosion X. I'm just doing a nice, generous coat all along the shock on all the metal surfaces. And this is going to help prevent corrosion from building up in the shock. You want to get it down in here. I also use a paintbrush and work it around the edges. And this is just going to help keep your shock from uh, rusting out as quickly. All right, so we're going to take the strut. I'm going to hold it in this orientation with the uh, airline going off to the bottom. We're going to take our existing uh, strut mount and we're going to place that on the top. So the way that, uh, that this goes on is if you see these two are going to go in the back, the one's going to go in the front, and then the airline is going to be up to the right looking down. So this is the orientation of this, uh, this mount. I put some anti-seize on uh, these threads. So if you're in the uh, areas that get a little bit of salt and corrosion, uh, this is a good process just to keep the, uh, the threads from seizing up. So you can get it off the next time. And then we're just going to snug those bolts on. And these are just going to get snugged. Don't kill them. But
Now we're going to take a 12 millimeter wrench and we're going to open up the uh, this bolt right here. If this starts spinning, you're going to want to grab a set of channel locks and lightly hold this brass fitting. Don't hold it too tight and then loosen the bottom bolt. When we put all this together, this will tighten up the whole thing. A little bit of air is coming out of there now. Now, we're going to go ahead and install the line into the fitting. So you'll see I've got the Voss fitting on, uh, flush with the, uh, with the tip of the hose. We're going to put the line in approximately how it would go in in the car. And I'm just going to loosely tighten this this up. We're not putting it all the way in. Just before the rubber seats. Now what we'll do is I'm going to take a paper towel and we're just going to push the line. Here, hold the uh, top of the shock. You see I had to push fairly hard. Uh, that's how you know that you've gotten it to seat all the way to the bottom as far as it's going to go. Go ahead and we'll snug this down. I'm going to keep this a little bit loose just so that this can twist just a tad bit because as we put this up into the uh, into the car we want to get this line to the correct position. And then we'll just give it one more little push make sure that this is seated completely which it is, and make sure not to kink this hose. Now we're gonna put the, uh, the shock into the car. You'll notice there are three bolts up above. We've anti-seized the ones on the frame, which are all the way up on top. And now we're gonna lift the module into the car. Starting in this orientation, you'll come up, and into the vehicle. And then we'll take the three bolts and loosely set those into place. You'll see I've got a swivel adapter with a deep socket. And that allows me to get around to all three of these bolts up at top. We're going to torque these to 40 newton meters with our torque wrench. This is the setup that I'm using to get to those. This is a 15 millimeter socket. Now we're going to clip this line in. I just put my finger and push on it. And now we're going to come up above and we're going to snug the re this line the rest of the way down. On those three bolts up above there, make sure to reduce your torque spec 30%. So if it's 40 Newton meters, uh, multiply that by 0.7 and that's going to be your torque spec with anti-seize. So I'll just finish snugging this up. We're not killing it. So once it's snug, just a little bit, just till it's nice and snug. All right. Now we're gonna take this, our uh, shock bolt. Be very careful that, uh, that you put this in the right orientation. You can easily clip these uh, and damage these uh, aluminum arms. You'll notice there's a shallow side. That shallow side is going to face towards the front of the vehicle. So it's going to come in in this orientation. We'll pull the shock in position and get the bolt and slide it the rest of the way through. Go. 
Now I'll place the nut at the end. With anti-seize, this torque spec is 98 Newton meters. So you'll see what we did. We took a floor, uh, a jack stand, turned it upside down, and put a jack underneath it, underneath the strut, just to raise it up just a tad bit. We didn't move it much, maybe about this much. And this is to just get this high enough so that we can install this link right here. Uh, what, what you'll want to do is have a friend push in on this rotor as you pull down on this front link right here and then slide the bolt in. Once you have it aligned and slid in, you can go ahead and take this nut, put it on, and then go ahead and take this control arm, push it into position, as you see, and then align this and slide the bolt in for this, from this side. Now we'll snug these bolts up. Now we're going to torque this bolt to 130 newton meters. If you're using anti-seize, torque this to 91 newton meters. We're going to torque this guy, which is going uh, for this upper arm, to 98 newton meters or 140 newton meters without anti-seize, 98 with anti-seize. This bolt right here, we're going to torque that one to 98 newton meters with anti-seize or 140 newton meters without anti-seize. Notice that the nut is on the back side of the car, not on the front. If you do put this on wrong, you can go and clip this arm accidentally. Um, and the shell side goes on the side of the arm. Be uh, careful of what direction that you put this hardware in. While you're doing the strut replacement, highly recommend replacing these links right here. These are the level sensors. This tells the air suspension on how high your car should go. We have uh, created an update to these air suspension links. We use a, uh, special, a plastic link right here that we custom make in-house, and we use a special uh, impact resin for these balls. Uh, the reason we do this is these usually tend to seize up, uh, and this, this product that we have made does not seize up. Now we're going to take our parking brake, electric parking brake, and we're going to slide this over. And we're going to take these two bolts. It's going to take a 16 millimeter wrench. And we're going to tighten these to 57 newton meters uh, without anti-seize and 40 newton meters with anti-seize. So we're just going to tighten these two bolts up. And then I use a 16 millimeter once you get started. And you can't do it by hand, just tighten them up just like this. Now we're going to take the brake caliper, the parking brake, and we're going to, you'll make sure that the clip is in the unlocked position, as you see. You're going to take that, plug it in from the back side, and then once this is plugged in, you're going to take that red clip and push it forward and lock it, just like so. And you're just going to push this clip forward when it is on the back side of the caliper. Last part is take the liner. You're gonna to wanna to put this back in. And then there is a mid aero shield, which is at the bottom of the car. Our car is on jack stands at the moment. So we're not going to do that. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope this video was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please comment below. If you want to get a pair of these shocks, these are Suncor's uh, Tesla Model S shocks. These are very uh, nice quality. I was very impressed. Uh, by what we have uh, put in here and uh, Stay tuned for the video on the front shocks. Check that video out and uh, uh, Please subscribe like and uh, enjoy fixing your car. Thank you